You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. All right, guys, so I'm back with privateer Nick Laurie. So Nick, last time I talked to you, we were, and a lot of people, I understand a lot of people gave you donations, but you still have your title sponsorship open, correct? Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as that goes, we still have spots open um, to for the season Supercross. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you guys are interested in a sponsorship spot on the bike, on the rig, uh, whatever it may be, that's still open. Yeah, and what we're going to do in addition to whatever he does there, Nick's going to check in with us after every race, and then periodically leading up to the season, we're going to check in and just weigh on random topics. Like today, I wanted to talk to Nick. Nick's a guy that rides on a lot of practice tracks, and sometimes you ride with the fast guys, and sometimes you don't, and there's debate on that. The part of the, There's one theory that says, okay, you ride with the fast guys, you get better, but there's another side where it can crush your confidence and like, oh, man, and kind of almost demoralize you. What are your thoughts and who do you ride with, Nick? Yeah, I mean, at least my take on it, like everything, everyone has their uh, thing, I'd say. But my take on it is um, you. I really, really enjoy riding with um, the best in the world. And maybe, maybe more so because I'm not close enough to them for it to bother them, for it to bother me, but it definitely gives me something to shoot for. Um, I mean, just the watching aspect of you know what if, if I hit this trend this way or in this bottom right, like they're doing it, then maybe they're right. Or there's something there that I'm not noticing that they're doing. It's the star guys, uh, Barsha comes around every now and then. Um we have TJ Albright, Luca Marcelisi's uh whole MTF crew. So I mean I'm learning a lot. So who who's your favorite guy to practice with? And the fact that you get to see Barsha has he ever has he ever put it on you in practice? No, that, I wouldn't say that. I mean, it's he's so fast, and like I think they kind of like to do their own thing as well. Like Star and Marshall like to do their own thing, and yeah, we get to jump in with them every now and then. But we don't really. Um, I guess they don't really want all of us to get at the same time because there's a lot of people, so it could be more about there's too many people in the track at one time. Does it? Does it? When when Barsha or one of those dudes comes up on you, I'm I'm assuming they're considerably faster than you at this point, especially the fact that you're testing on a bike that really didn't even have supercross suspension, which is I'm sorry, dude, that's crazy. But does does it like demoralize you or do you go like, okay, yeah, that that I could probably hit that, or like are you close enough that you can jump in for a little bit? Um, uh, I think me personally I'm at the point where like it's not demoralizing, it's not like it's not like he's laughing every two laughs. I mean, like, I mean, we can go, we can go a fifteen minute moto where he starts first, I start last, and I, I'm not gonna get lapped. But if it's a long moto, and it kind of depends where they start us all out at. Like, if I go first or if I'm third in line, whatever, we all get jumbled up, and yeah, they're gonna pass you at some point. So it's not really demoralizing for me. Um, I just really like watching and learning. And so how does, how does that work for, for people that don't know, like when you, how do you train for supercross when you show up, are you told, Hey, clear the track, the star guys are on, or, Hey, you can come out with this. How does that go down? Uh, it really is like the preference of the day. Like if star wants to work on something uh, on their own, then they'll clear the track for them. But if they're just doing motor, whatever, we all start together and they'll go from slowest to fastest or fast, slowest, or sometimes they just do random, like, but we run all mixed up. And what track did you say you ride at? Uh, right now we're at Millsaps Train Facility. And then uh, we, we'll kind of go star every now and then to ride. And star's cool with letting someone like you, kind of a privateer, come jump on? Yeah, they're absolutely cool with it. Wow, that's awesome. And then, uh, so have you ever seen what's the wildest you thing you've seen at the practice track? Who, who, is there a guy? Can you, can you talk about any of the guys that you see and you're just like, dang, I can't believe how good that guy is, but it doesn't translate to the races. Um, I wouldn't particularly say it doesn't translate to the races because it does. We just, we've kind of, I think in this case, um, Jordan Smith has been kind of had some injuries where we never got to see his full potential. But on a practice track, or at least here at MTF, like, 
she'll send it. I mean, it's ridiculous. Really? So that's well, and that makes sense because that dude is just full send. I'm excited to see him in the West Coast. You saw he's riding West Coast, right? Yeah. So when Star rolls in, they got like their own gate of people. Like, do you get along with any of those guys? How does that how does that go? You got a buddy on the team or how how does that work with Star? Yeah, I mean we're all cool with each other. We all pretty much knew each other. Like like I grew up with Dax and Deegan racing them. So like we all know each other and no one's got any problems or I mean, I mean, for anything, they want to help us as much as uh, NTF wants to give them a track to ride. Um, for some reason, NTF just seems to drain better when it rains. So when the rain comes, it they definitely come around a lot. Nice. And then, so the team that you're looking at riding for next year, do you train with those guys specifically? And have you ridden the bike yet that you'll be racing? Um, I have not ridden the bike yet. Uh, that's probably a next week thing. Um, but as far as that goes, I'm definitely staying at NTF for Supercross. But motocross might be a um, different story. Nice. And then I was talking about this on a, a show I just released. So as a 250 rider, I have to think you'd want to be on the West Coast so you get that month break in the middle of the season where if you're East, you do, I mean, you get a week off here and there, but you're essentially going from the start of East Coast all the way through SMX. That's a long time. Do you think it's an advantage for the West guys? Definitely. Um, I don't know. It could be controversial. Like, like I know someone like me, I, I really do not do well with time off the bike. Even on week or two, I do not do well. Um, and as I continue racing every weekend, I get better and better and as a rookie you're going to get better every race it becomes normal to you it's normalized um because you haven't done it until just now so i would say um, there's advantages and advantages uh maybe for someone like smitty he's a he's a veteran like he knows the in and outs of it and he probably do well with his recovery time okay so for the rookies you like the momentum but with the veterans, you like to see them kind of maybe get their rest. Eh, that's a good theory. I like that. That's, 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 a, that's a great idea. And then the other thing I talked about in my video was, so I, I got to ask, how's Deegan look at the practice track? Is he, th is he there often? Does he come with an entourage? What does it look like? Um, as much as people like to think he comes with an entourage, he's, he's a focused, a very focused rider. And, I mean, there's no difference between him and anyone else on team on a practice day. There's no, I don't see any special um, requirements or anything, um, you know, working well towards him more than anyone else. Uh, I'd say he's just like everyone else. He trains, he puts his work in, and he's damn good. Yeah, he's, uh, you can't argue. And that's the thing that I said about him last, like last year when the season started. I didn't think he'd have, you know, the dog, I didn't think he'd be able to dig down deep because, you know, a guy like you, um, you don't come from money, you know, you're not set up with all the gifts that someone like a Hayden Deegan has got. I was just wondering if he had the desire, you know, with that, with that in the place, but obviously he does like, it, you know, he, he's figured out a way to find the motivation. Yeah. I mean, he, he's definitely proved a lot of people wrong. And I mean, if even as an amateur, like, you you have to be pretty good to win A class, B class. Um, as much as talent could have been a part of that, I don't necessarily think it was all of it. I think there's a lot of work ethic behind it. And then do you think any of the guys uh, were dodging Deegan to go to the West? Do you think anyone's scared of him? Do you think they put Schmoda or any of those guys away from him intentionally? Well, I'll put it this way. I know Star put their best guys on each coast, they wouldn't put two of their best guys on the same coast. Um, which which is why I was stoked to see both Jordan Smith, and I wanted to see Jordan away from him because it's Jordan's time, and like you said, he sends it, and it's it. I mean, he's getting older. He's got to get this thing done here pretty soon. And Thrasher, can you give us any insight on Thrasher? He's good. I mean, they're all pretty – They're like, as much as we'd like to see drama and hear about it, they're all good. But Thrasher had that horrendous injury, so he was out for a long time. 
did he get right back in right back in the mix with everybody or do you think it's going to take him a few rounds to kind of get it get the rust knocked off um i think he, they practice how they race they they do a lot of race day replicas which we do at ntf um i would say theirs is more intense because they actually put them on a gate and make them race um so if there's any room for him to get comfortable it's not much Oh, wow. So they're doing full on races and there's a lot of egos and wow. You know, and I say one of the most important things is simulating gate drops. And that's pretty close. If you got that many guys to drop the gate, do they have the East coast and the West coast guys going together? Yeah. Full gate. And then have you seen, do they back off the East coast guys when the West coast guys, do you see any of the focus shift when it gets closer to Anaheim? Honestly, no. And I would, I would think that their theory is, and I don't know 100%, I'm just from observing this is what I'm guessing, um, they don't want to shift any which way because what works works, and then you don't want to differ from that. Nice. I like it. So, and then, uh, so like I say, we didn't have a ton to talk about today. I just wanted to get you on, remind people they can go find, where can they donate to you again? Uh, you can go to my Instagram and DM me. Um, it's underscore Nick Lori, or you can help my email. It's Nick Lori two two six gmail.com. And um, I mean, yeah, dude, just hit me up. Uh, I'm always checking my emails and Instagram. And but, he does yeah. and Nick does have the primary sponsor still available. And that primary sponsor will be who you'll be brought to on this show every week. We're gonna we're gonna give them publicity on the show, we're gonna publicity on your bike, and we're gonna follow your journey through this whole thing. So I think that's pretty cool, Nick. Yeah, no, I think it's sick. I mean, I I, I love when people reach out to me because not only does it help me financially, but um, they're across the big confidence thing. And if you think someone else believes in you, then you start to believe in yourself a little more. How are how are you feeling these days? Are you are you in are you fit? Or are you trying to peak for the first round of East Coast? Because I mean, you got like what a month before it starts. Yeah, I think this is the end of. I think next week will be week like four out oh well, that's actually sooner you know what it's starting sooner this year because you guys go to detroit real quick huh you guys open in detroit is that right yeah that kind of is like i didn't really really enjoy it that because it's your first race and then you get two weeks off yeah that's weird but at least they're i don't know i i like it on one hand in the sense that we get to we don't have to wait and it's like two separate seasons it does mix it up a little bit more but yeah, I would imagine for you, it's kind of tough and you don't can't really get a rhythm. And if you have a bad race, a lot of times you can come back the next week and redeem yourself, but now you got two weeks to sit on it. Does that bug you when that happens? Yeah, it's like, I mean, it can go good. And then you're feeling like, you're like, this is sick for two weeks. Or you have a bad race and you're like, this might be time to hang it up for those two weeks. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You're going but for it. You, you're all in for the season, Nick. I, I know you got talent. And I know the bike that you're going to be riding is competitive. I, I wish you were on it a little earlier, but hey, you take what you can get, right? Yeah, definitely. And that's another thing about having um, the facility. Like, I feel like definitely this year, everyone at Millside Stream so it has like their thing. Like, everyone has their own personality. Everyone brings something to the table. So if someone has a bad week, it's, it's not going to go far without someone saying something or making it better and not making it better like oh here's a pity party for them it's like you know you have your friends and you have your good group of trainers and that's why i think star is, is they all gel and fit very well where it's not detrimental when you have a bad week or there's always people around you to lift you up because i mean as far as let's just say for instance a1 if jordan wins and thrasher gets 10th well there actually could be faster than jordan monday morning at the star track and then, then you're like okay it's not that big of a deal yeah kind of but the, does it create well and i know you haven't been in the truck with someone like that yet but i would think there's a little animosity like he's your he's your teammate but when it becomes your number one competitor it's got to get a little awkward yeah and that's something i haven't reached yet and i don't really think anyone in my group has reached that yet but we all still have our animosity and we want to be better than each other. Um, and it's fun, dude. Like, we talk a lot of shit and, um, I mean, we go at each other. But 
that's as far as it goes. We just talk and then we go to the track and make it happen. So like, okay, so you, you know, it sounds like you guys go and you race at the track. What happens if say you want to do like, say if you're struggling in rhythm sections or whoops, do you do that after practice or before practice? Or when do you focus on, you know, the technical part of writing? I mean, as far as that goes, little Brian, Brian Johnson, our trainer is, is pretty good at listening what we want or what we need. We're not amateurs anymore. We're not going to look for the easy way out. Um, so like I struggle in the whoops personally and a lot of riders do. So if we do, we usually moto, moto on Monday. So he kind of picks out like where we're struggling and then we work that on Tuesday or Thursday. But if we come to him saying, Hey, we need to see like improvement here, then we'll adjust the schedule for that. And like I said, we have a good group of people. I mean, I couldn't tell you how many times um, my roommate Lucas helped me through whoops or turns or just little things where he's a little more or a lot more experienced than I am. Yeah, that's nice. It's nice to have people who will pick you up rather than just be like, oh, dude, you suck and just put you down. Um, and it's yeah. it's crazy. It's a, it's a different era than it was, you know, like in Carmichael's era when everybody rode on their own, hid from each other and, you know, they didn't want anyone to see what they were doing. But I guess with the Internet, everything's out there anyway. It's just about figuring out how to dial it in on race day, right? Yeah, and you got to look at how the sports developed. Everyone is really good. Where I think back then there was four or five good guys and they kind of hid away from each other to, you know, keep a secret where it doesn't matter what you keep secret out, everyone's going to be really good. All right, Nick. Well, anything else you want to get off your chest before I let you go? Like I said, I just wanted to check in, let people know, uh, still looking for that title sponsor and where they can help you out. Anything else you wanted to get off your chest? No, man, I mean, just I think testing the bike next week is the next step. And then hopefully you guys see some Instagram posts or YouTube videos soon about what's going on. I've been pretty quiet on social media because I'm kind of waiting for that next step. But, um, yeah, just keep an eye out. Reach out to me. I mean, even if you want to just talk, dude, like I love when people reach out to me and hit me up. Perfect. And then uh, can you get us some exclusive uh, footage that you don't show on Instagram that we can put up here? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks, Nick, man. You take it easy and uh, we'll touch base here again really soon. Before I let you go, are you uh, are you one of those guys that won't make picks? Or are you going to make picks for Anaheim? Who, who do you have winning in the 250 and the 450 class? 450, you just you have to look at the data. I think Jet's going to be really strong. I think he's the winner. Even though it's A1 and squirrely things happen, you're still staying with Jet. Yeah, I think it goes Jet, Sex, and Tony. Mm, that's a stop. I mean, it's hard to argue that. That's some strong dudes right there. And what about the 250 class? You got Joe, you got Levi Kitchen, you've got Nate Thrasher, Jordan Smith, RJ Hampshire. It's a pretty stacked field. Yeah, I think Jordan's going to play it. I mean, like I said, he goes all out, but he's a little older, a little wiser. So I don't think he's necessarily going to die for that win, but I think he's going to be strong and he's going to be fast enough to win. But I think he will settle for a podium just to keep it in the championship. So I'd go, I'd go probably, man, like part Hampshire, Jordan. I know, right? I, I thought it was going to be the Joe Shimoda show, but I'm like, wait a second, Levi Kitchen, who's won races, he's got to win when jet was on the track. So that's, and he's, he's really liking that Kawasaki, but we're going to find out for sure when it actually hits a race situation. I reverse mine. I think I'm going to Joe Jordan Smith, Ben Hampshire. That's no Levi kitchen on the podium. Dude, it's like so hard. And I, I love Levi. Like I've been like, even when he was at star, it's hard not to put him up there, but yeah, it's um, dude, it, it's fractions. Like it could be, Honestly, you might as well throw a throw a dart at a board, and you probably have a just as good a chance of picking the winner in that two hundred and fifty class. So, I tell you, if Levi gets the start, then it's the Levi show. Yeah. Hey, what do you think of Max Voland? He'll make his Kawasaki debut as well. Do you know Max? I don't know him personally. I'm definitely studying him a lot riding, but that's another one that was getting really hard. Yes, I, I'm a big Max Volan fan. I like him, his dad, and I just I, – I thought he was going to be a lot better. I don't like the Kawasaki program they, or the KTM program they brought him up on. I'm hoping this is a fresh start and we're going to see something out of him. 
Yeah, I mean, and I think I think the controversy behind that is the KTM really good fit max. Like it looks really good with them. Maybe the I don't know if it's the geometry of the bike or the frame, um, but he rode it pretty well. And I can't really tell by videos if he's trying to ride the Kawasaki that way or if he's um, you know, taking a different look at his riding style. It's hard to say. Yeah, it is definitely hard to say, but I cannot wait. I'm like a kid, like I can't almost sleep these nights before because I know it's like it's like Christmas for me on Saturday. I can't wait. So all right, Nick. Well, we'll check in afterward. You have a you have a wonderful evening, brother. All right, you too.